In the previous slides, we considered the case where we had an interface between two dielectrics. But what will happen if we have an interface between a perfect conductor and a dielectric? And I, I don't really like the way when the book refers to a, a perfect conductor as a conductor. Um, a perfect conductor means that the conductivity is infinite. And when the conductivity is infinite means the electric field is zero. So when I say, um, when I say perfect conductor, I must specify, I, sh I should not refer to it only as a conductor, because a conductor means the conductivity is high, but it's not infinite. So the electric field will not be exactly zero. So if you consider here the case, the ideal case where we have a perfect conductor, electric field inside is zero. If we apply exactly the same approaches we have learned, if we select, um, the, if we apply the integral of E dot dl is equal to zero across uh, this uh, rectangle here, and keep in mind there is no field inside, so the e, e, uh, E2 tangential here is zero. So you get that E1 tangential must be equal to E2 tangential, but E2 tangential is zero. So this means when you have a perfect conductor, you can never have tangential electric field to that service. Uh, to that service. The electric field must only be normal. So uh, for, for a perfect conductor, there is no tangential field. There is only elect uh, normal electric field. And in the case of a, of a, of a good conductor, uh, this will be approximately satisfied. There will be very, very tiny electric field, but most of the field indeed will be a normal field. So I thought of, show of showing you what will happen when we put a conductor, a piece of perfect conductor inside an electric field. So this is an electric field here. You will see that the, char the, the, the charges in this conductor will, uh, will align themselves on the surface such that you have positive charges on one side, negative charge on one side. Electric field will terminate on the negative charge. They will start from the positive charges. And all these field lines, if you take a careful look, they are all normal to the boundary. So all of them ends normal to the boundary. They are not tangential, don't have tangential component. And this is a characteristic of conductor. Electric field lines at every point here, they are normal to the bound, normal to the conductor boundary. So regardless of the shape of the perfect conductor, electric field lines will always be normal to that conductor. You cannot have any tangential field. And the reason that you cannot have any tangential field, because there is no field inside. So there is no tangential field inside the conductor. And because of the continuity of the tangential field, there cannot be any con uh, tangential field outside the conductor, just outside the conductor. Of course, in other parts of the space, the field can take any shape, but on the boundary, the electric field must be normal. One other byproduct of the assumption of the existence of perfect conductor uh, that we can obtain if we apply the same bell-shaped um, service and apply Gauss law. If we say the integral of d dot ds over this bell-shaped structure is equal to zero, then we get three integrals, the top the, the top desk, the bottom desk, and the side wall. The bottom desk will give us zero this time because there is no field, there is no E, then there is no D, then there is no D normal. So this one will give us zero. The side flux will give us zero because delta H will make it zero, go to zero. Only the top flux will give us an answer. So this will give us... Uh, D normal delta S, and this will give us a service area delta S, and this will give us the, the final result when we simplify, gives us the result that all electrical engineers know that when you have a perfect conductor uh, like this one here, then the charges, if they exist, they reside on the service, and the electric field, the normal component of D, will be equal to the service charge density. And this comes directly from, from an extension of the dielectric case because there is no normal component inside the conductor. It is zero. So uh, in, in conductors, uh, perfect conductors, charges will align themselves in such a way that D normal is equal to the service charge density. To illustrate this concept, we consider the case of a barrel blade capacitor. This barrel blade capacitor has a service charge density uh, on the positive blade of 0.2 nanocoulomb per meter squared. The separation between the two blades is one millimeter and uh, the dielectric constant uh, uh, used in, to fill the gap between the two conductors is 2.2 uh, here, epsilon r is equal to 2.2. would like to get the voltage difference between the positive blade and the negative blade. 
So, for, and as I explained for you in the lecture several times, when you have a battery plate uh, capacitor or battery plate uh, uh, structure as shown here, if, we, if D is small enough, if the spacing between the two blades is small enough relative to the, uh, to the length in the other dimensions, then the field will be pretty much uniform. It does not change inside. Um, now we can apply the boundary condition if if rho s here on the surface is um, is equal to uh, 0.2 nanocoulomb per meter squared, then we know because there is no field inside the conductor itself here inside the conductor even though it's thin, but inside it there is no field. Then this normal component of d must be equal to rho s. This is coming directly from the from the uh, from the boundary condition that we learned now when we have good conductors. So we know that this point 0.2, but I assume that the field is uniform. So if D here is equal to 0.2 nanocoulomb per meter squared, then D everywhere is 0.2 nanocoulomb per meter squared. By the way, you cannot say the same about uh, cylindrical or spherical structures because D, D is not uniform. D depends on the distance from the charge. While here, because I assumed it's uniform, then its value at the interface is the same as, as its value anywhere else. So here I know that D is equal to 0.2 nanocoulomb per meter squared. Once I have D, I can get the electric field. Once I have the electric field, I can get the voltage difference between the two blades. So by assumption of uniformity of the electric field, D will be the same as D at the interface, which is equal to surface charge density. So D, it will be pointing in the Z direction, and I assume Z is pointing from the positive blade to the negative blade. It's 0.2 AZ nanocoulomb per meter squared. Once I know what is D, I can get E. D, E is equal to D over epsilon. And remember here we have a dielectric constant of 2.2. So this is 2.2 epsilon naught, 1 over 36 pi 10 to the minus 9. This 0.2 nanocoulomb per meter squared, so 10 to the minus 9. This one will cancel with this one. This one with this one will give us 11. So the answer is 36 pi over 11, which will give you 10.281 volt per meter. Now, in order to get the, the voltage difference between the positive blade and the negative blade, I called it here VA minus VB. I have to integrate from A to B, E dot DL. Uh, and because the field is uniform, uh, e is the same. I can take it out from the integral. The integral of dl will give me the spacing between the two blades, which is d. So if you multiply the electric field we obtained earlier by the spacing, which is 10 to the minus 3, which is shown here, you get a voltage difference of 0.0128 volts. So now we know that uh, the voltage difference between them is just 0.0128 volts. And, um, of course, by changing the, uh, the, if the charge density was different or the dielectric constant was different, these numbers were, would have been different. The last thing I would like to mention in this lecture is the concept of electrostatic shielding. Because the field inside a conductor um, is zero, uh, so we can, if we, we can really shield any region um, electromagnetically from the outside world, by surrounding by a thin shield, by a thin shield of conductor, and grounding this uh, this uh, uh, thin shield, so this guaranteed that it is kept at zero at zero voltage here, um, and this is exactly what happens when you get into one of those buildings with lots of metal when you lose you lose signal from your uh, on your cell phone or your radio, and the reason is that the metal building. Uh, will act like a shield. It does not allow electromagnetic fields from outside to reach you inside. So you'll be completely isolated from the outside world in terms of electromagnetic fields. And this has many applications, military or otherwise. You can shield different areas just to protect them from, uh, uh, from any uh, external signal. Um, and this also the use as well, in, uh, for example, in computer to try to avoid the interference from other sources, electromagnetic sources, or and so on. So this concept of shielding is also very important, and we'll be using this later in uh, in other applications.